In this video, I want to give an update on this X86 SBC, uh, the Radsa X2L uh, that I've been using. Um, currently, I actually added a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 fan uh, because it's an Intel Celeron chip that gets really hot. So if you watched my previous videos, uh, you know that I was talking about actually putting Chrome OS on this. Um, and I've kind of changed some things up, so I just wanted to give you an update overall on what's going on kind of <laughs> with this board and what I've kind of done to it. Uh, so first thing is you'll notice these very janky wires. Um, that's so uh, I can turn on the fan and power it off the uh, GPIO pins. If I just disconnect like pos positive right now, it'll stop the fan. There you go. It just stopped it, but let's bring it back. There you go. Uh, I am going to show you. It's a very um, unique setup or a very janky setup however you would like to call it. Uh, in between those two plates is basically a copper shim. Um, and then I've just added a basically uh, heat sink right next to it. So it's hopefully transferring the heat from this from this uh, fan to this heat sink. Uh, touching it, I do feel airflow going through it. So it does feel better, but I don't know if you know what the thermals are because I need to just uh, run some program that can actually tell me the temperature or I can go to BIOS and read it but if I do pick it up uh, it feels significantly cooler than it was before without any uh, active cooling and just a passive heatsink but this was what I had before. Um, I also printed a or 3d printed a stand that somebody made for the board uh, right now it's touched to cable so it's a bit stiff to move around but it's basically just uh, a plate that elevates and mounts to the board so it's not just rocking on my table just like the other boards uh, it's a bit you know organized HDMI Ethernet USB-C to power it and basically this is connected to a USB-C uh, dock that connects to wireless receivers for a keyboard and this Logitech mouse All right uh, so now that's the hardware kind of updates on the physical kind of board side of things and changing that um, I didn't put any thermal paste, but I did put some thermal padding, so that should help. Now, I've removed Chrome OS completely, and now I've actually put Alpine Linux. Um, and Alpine Linux, I thought was pretty uh, lightweight, uh, actually was pretty good in my opinion when I was kind of playing with it. I just got introduced to it, so I don't know all the bells and whistles of it. So it reads the architecture, it reads the board perfectly fine. So if I do a top command, you can see how much memory I am using, how much I have left. Um, and basically the processes and the CPU being consumed. Uh, the CPU is actually not being used a lot. It's just an idle, which is awesome. Uh, if you find this a bit weird, so if I zoom out, I've just loaded a window manager. I can open terminal commands and if I open Firefox, so I can still open the web browser on the side. I was looking at some, some GitHub page, um, but I can basically use a window manager to still open uh, Firefox and any app that actually needs to output a display. Uh, so this really helps for computer vision stuff because I still need um, a driver, display driver to be able to even output, let's say, uh, you know, video feeds so I can do anything or computer vision stuff. But yeah, I found actually having a window manager was more lightweight and didn't consume lots of RAM. But overall, yeah, that's an update that I did to Rata X2L, the x86 Intel Celeron processor with four gigs of RAM. Very low compute hardware, I would say. Um, very capable still. Uh, but it's low compute compared to what we have these days. Um, and in that constraint, basically, I found Alpine Linux was really great. And it was able to kind of take advantage of that hardware and still give me that performance. The unfortunate thing is I can't run stuff like I was running Olama on this board uh, with, or I was trying to run Olama DeepSeek R1 and struggling because of the performance. Um, it wasn't that great, but it was still possible uh, on this board using Chrome OS in my last video that you might have seen. Uh, but now, obviously, I've removed it and replaced it with Alpine Linux, which is basically built on a complete different, I want to say, architecture and uses um, a different library and set of tools. So Olama is actually not compatible with Alpine Linux, uh, which kind of is a bummer, but I have some alternative options that I want to explore and I'll kind of figure out that I can get uh, DeepSeekR1 running locally on this board uh, through Alpine Linux. Um, but that is one caveat. So I'm not too disappointed and too bummed out. I think I'll just carry on with it. Um, but the performance gain that you get from using at least Alpine Linux or a simple Linux distro 
uh, that goes kind of bare bones with no heavy desktoping. Uh, it really takes advantage of that low compute hardware and you know kind of helps me get that performance gains I needed. Uh, so I am still uh, hopeful that uh, I can make the best of both worlds and get this working. Anyways, that was just a quick update. Uh, other than that, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks everybody.